Okay. Welcome everybody to the Chaos Common Metrics Working Group meeting for February 3rd. I will share my screen with the um, with the agenda. Um, there's the agenda. So we have a few things to talk about. Um, we can talk about the action items from the last meeting. Just here we are. Is there somebody? Okay. Um, we then we should talk about kind of the expansion of of the chaos common working group meeting. So I put that next on the agenda before we do anything else. Um, and let's let's just talk about what we're what we're adding and how that's how that's going to work. Um, and then if we have time, we'll do the open uh, PRs and issues. Uh, we'll look at the occasional and consistent contributors and look at organizational diversity, which is the other metric that we're in review right now. Don, your screen looks different than what mine does in the minutes. Yeah, mine too. It has some more items in that. Well, yeah. you know what? I probably haven't refreshed it and it's just, well, look at that. <laughs> completely different thanks for saying that not just letting me let me go on continue on um uh we can start by adding yourself and the attendees that's a that's a good thing uh to start with uh cool um i'll just i'll start cranking on some of the things from the last the last meeting um we're gonna add a tag for revisiting metrics. I think that already happened. Right? Yep, I, I create I have created the doc and the issue and tagged it. I think this was different. I think this was creating uh, an actual label for revisiting metrics, uh, which we have. Okay. Okay. Um, because you also had the action item to create the issue and the Google Doc for the yep. organizational okay. diversity. Uh, I, have, done. I have done it. That's what I'm written in the bracket done. Cool. Um, and Matt, did you get a chance to connect with uh, Regina on next steps for? Very, very, very briefly, but I think it's just about done. So I think we're good. I think okay. the metric is ready for re release with the new name. Uh, cool. And then it looks like we can, I saw the pull request for the converting the, uh, the minutes. So we can take a look at that um, in a bit. So, so well done, everyone. We actually, uh, we actually got all of our action items from the last meeting. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so let's, let's talk about what, um, uh, sorry, what's the, sorry, I just want to ask there, what's this issues in the working group agenda? Just item? put that like on, um, on hold for just a second. If we, okay. it's kind of a common issue that came okay. out of DEI. It's about how okay. to think about labels. Okay. That cool. may cascade across working groups. Okay. Um, so, so let's talk about the the proposed changes to um, the the common uh, working group. I think let's just say common working group. Um, so we talked about a few things. So we talked about adding some of the operational things into into common, um, including things like the data use awareness statement and some of the uh, uh, what were the other ones security framework stuff. Um, I'm not sure what the consistent project document distribution is. Does anybody want to talk about this one? I'm not doing a very good job of talking about it. Just in terms of the overall, like what are the candidates, the candidate processes? Yeah, like what? Yeah, um... yeah so basically these would be the processes that kind of maybe not impact the entire project, but at least like big parts of the project. Cause you know how like the metrics working groups function a little differently than the software working groups. Like, but some of these changes would certainly cascade across 
um, multiple, in this case, say metrics working group. So the first one is with metrics release update. So Ritik is on and he had done the work with uh, the release process with Kevin, who's also on and Yash and myself and Georg. So just to help automate that process to which there are a bunch of things going on. Um, this is also, I think, includes the, the Mars software as well as um, I would say it includes the translation work as well. So like how we think about making the metrics available for translation. And so that that would be that. So like would this would come and be a place where we would talk about any updates or any changes to the process. So that's the first one. Um, consistent project. Doc oh, so this one is um, I we I came to learn about the dot GitHub repository. Do you know this? Yeah, I, I didn't know about this. And so it's a way to distribute documents across an organization. And so, for example, like the contributing MD file is one that we currently I believe we currently place in every different repository, but dot github the dot github repo could be a candidate for distributing that so like just kind of managing that process by which documents get distributed across does it automatically distribute them when you add them to the dot github directory or is that just for when you create a new repository it copies the starter documents from I, that I think it's the latter yeah yeah okay. and so and I haven't played around with this at all this I I only like learned about this you know, just really recently, um, but can I think you it's share the link. Can you share any link for us to get uh, familiarized with it? Yeah, actually, Don, if you scroll down just a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, go scroll up right at the bottom of that first page. So see that where it says example. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. There's an example right there. Yeah, because there's actually a lot of stuff that you can do in this in this um, dot GitHub directory. You can um, this one has uh, issue templates, mm -hmm. for example, um, which is a good use for it. And and we're yeah we're using it at VMware for things like the default code of conduct, contributing and README files that we mm -hmm. want our projects to use when they um, when we first create the repository, so that we don't have to. Um, don't have to chase people down who forgot to add whatever document they forgot to add. Yep. Um, so, so it does. It does make that. It does make that a lot easier. It's it's pretty cool. So question. Then, what's that, Kevin? Uh, question. So the, the code of conduct gets. Uh, you said that it gets copied into any new repos that get created. I think so. Okay. How uh, if changes are made to the code of conduct in the dot GitHub uh repo do the do the changes automatically get pulled to the other repos or oh no i think someone needs to do more research yeah on that. this is uh, this would be this is why this is in common like it would be something that we would think about <laughs> even anyone... i'm thinking uh, sorry uh, even uh, i'm thinking if we are keeping it like this then what is the need of metric repo where we have those uh, standard template if we are moving those template to this Repo. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Well, I think that's different because um, we copy those templates every time we create a new metric, right? So this this would copy the template for new repositories as opposed to new metrics. You see what I mean? I think it's a yeah. different scope. Okay. Does somebody want to take the action item to dig into this a little bit and do a bit of research and figure out exactly what happens when we put things in GitHub, the dot GitHub directory and what happens when we change them later? So I'm, I had already in the DEI working group where this kind of came up, I had taken that action item. So I'll just continue that into this group. Okay. So kind of cheating, okay. but you know, all right. What's that? And I just thought it's kind of cheating, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Doubling up an action item in two working groups. So, and I, I would. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, I would like to point out that the currently the process 
or the, the structure that we've defined is to create all of these documents like the code of conduct uh, or templates in the community repo and then in the other repos, the working group repos, for example, we create documents that just link or point to the documents within the community repo. So that, that is the current structure, the way we have it outlined currently. Uh, and I like that because then when we change it, we just change it in one place and everything links to it. Right. Uh, so we, but I think we need to better understand exactly how how changes are, are handled when you, I feel like we don't know enough about this .github um, structure to know whether or not it's useful for us yet. Yeah, I, I agree. It it yeah. could be useful for us, but I don't I don't necessarily know that it would uh, replace our current desired structure. Yeah, agreed. Um, but the but the other thing that it allows you to do. So you see how our um, our landing page, the whole chaos org, is just um, kind of the default landing page with like you've got pinned things and you've got repositories. Um, whereas if you go to a repository. You know, you get to see like you see like a README and you know other information. What we've done at VMware, there's a way to do this, and it's in the .github um, folder. You put a README in there, and or for the org, I forget exactly how it works, um, but you you can basically put a README at the top above your pinned repositories. So we could oh. put something that's like new contributors go here, so and so go here. This is the website. Um, we could do something kind of nice with it. So, and I, I think this is just in the .github for the for the org, and it's like the I think it's the README. Let's take a look. I don't want to look at the That's settings cool. of our org right now. But I'm listening um, to you talk, Don and Kevin, and then it was Justin who brought this up yesterday in DEI. Like it, it's it seems like there's a possibility of a mix of things, like how yeah. we just what we can do with the github repo and maybe that doesn't help with document distribution but it helps in other other ways don can you uh, click the add it in that page see where it is taking it so that we can get a little bit of idea on that github page of vmware sorry what yeah can you click the edit send feedback and there's an edit sign on it not, not this one, the edit sign. Oh, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to edit the VMware main. I'm not saying, right I'm not saying edit it. I'm just saying where that link is taking us so that get an idea. Of yeah, it. it's, uh, um, it is, it is a dot yeah, GitHub yeah, the for, the, okay, oh, for okay, the organization. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So ahead. you create a dot GitHub repository. Sorry, now I'm remembering exactly how this works. You create a dot GitHub, a repository named dot GitHub in your okay. org. And then from that repository, you um, here. Okay. Um, Josh posted the link to the yeah. support link. So. And then okay. this is this is where you. Okay. Things. Um, maybe it was in our profile. Yep. This is the yeah. one. Yeah. This is the one. It's in the profile directory. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's I mean it's pretty select the way it works. I wonder if we could just rename our community, our current community repo to dot GitHub and then pick and choose some of these new features that we want to incorporate. Like I don't know if there's value in having the the contributing.md file automatically be created in any new repos, but I, I would assume that's a choice that we make when we create the repos. Don't know, uh, but I hear you, but I don't know the answer. Okay, so I think I think that's probably, so we got sidetracked from the, how we're gonna run the common working group um, with the GitHub discussions, but I think we've taken that as far as we can until Matt comes back with, with a little more information. Um, the question I had about, um, you know, bringing these things into the common working group, we talked a little bit about the metrics release updates. Um, how much time do we think that will take in the common working group? Is that something that, you know, like a few minutes in every meeting, probably a few more minutes when we're coming up to a release? 
I guess what I'm asking is for those of you who are deeply involved in the release, um, will we have enough time in this meeting to cover the things that you need to cover to talk about the release? Uh, so I, I can speak to that. Uh, I, I suppose when, when I think about it, I still, I kind of feel like the, the work of the release and the work of the Mars project is probably going to occur uh, kind of outside of common. Mm -hmm. So I, I suppose uh, the release, the release process, what we could, what we could use would be kind of high level, I suppose, high level design decisions and high level coordination decisions. Uh, so discussions of, of how we can do that might be helpful. Okay. Uh, however, uh, I don't have any specific examples of that right now. So I suppose it, uh, it kind of comes back a little bit to uh, maybe what I had mentioned in Slack, where maybe we just have uh, updates. We do uh, uh, an update for the, the release project group uh, for each chaos common meeting. And then if there is if there are kind of design decisions around that process, uh we could we could discuss them during the updates i suppose uh that's kind of how i see it i don't i don't know that it would be helpful to have the common working group try to work through some of the tasks of the release uh, during the meeting yep okay that makes total sense so we'll we'll save for in the working group we'll save kind of the high level design decisions any like big rocks that you want to just like talk about and then updates to the re release process every every meeting just a quick quick update on how things are going so and i would like to i would like to point out that mars is a piece of software that that creates the release document so mars is part of the uh basically the release working group but at a at a at a at a high level, they're not two things. It's just I would say the release working group is 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 how we would want to think about this, and Mars is part of that group. So, but Mars itself is is very specifically a piece of software. Yeah. Is there a release working group? Uh, yes. Uh, although we we generally don't refer to it as a, a working group, it's usually a we refer to ourselves as uh, release managers, I suppose, uh, Georg and myself uh, and Ritik and Yash uh, would be the, the four people that uh, manage the release process. It's sitting right there. You could be the Martians, you realize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess what I was asking is if you already have your own working group, do you need to bring it into common? Maybe I'm maybe I'm just missing something. Uh, it's not really a it's not really a working group. It's it's more it's just we're the we're the four individuals who have managed the release in the past. So okay, uh, there is no formal there's no formal uh, working group. Uh, we don't have we don't really have a repo for that. We don't have regular meetings. Okay. Uh, so it would make sense to use common as a place where we can come together to coordinate those high level uh, design decisions about the process. Uh, in the past, what we we usually take those to the uh, community meeting. Uh, however, uh, uh, I've, I've noticed that when we do take them to the community meeting, we often have to supply a lot of background information about what's happening. Uh, so having uh, having the the focus here in common uh, might be a little bit easier. Okay. It reminds cool. me of the the DEI event badging group. Uh, they give updates in the DEI working group meeting, but they work largely outside of that meeting. But bring updates to DEI working group and talk about complex issues. Yeah, that's that's exactly how how I was thinking about it. Okay, cool. Um, and we talked about consistent project document distribution. So I just put a note to look down below because we've also got that down there. Yep. Um, Sophia, do you want to 
talk about how you see the like the work that you've been doing on the data use awareness statement rolling into this? Sure. Yeah, and I, I will say this is my first common meeting, so I'm mostly just oh, welcome. To Yay, we're happy to have you. <laughs> how it's run, and also trying to be sensitive of the fact that this, clearly this meeting existed before and had other objectives. So just continuing to fold new prerogatives into a working group, I'm. I'm always skeptical of that as someone whose scope is constantly changing in my own job. <laughs> um, so I don't know, I think we've been kind of tossing it around because we're not, it doesn't really have a good place or a good home for it. Like we had initially started this work at the weekly meeting level, um, given that it's so far reaching. Um, but I think given that to get this moving and out the door, it does need a bit more of a focused effort. So I do think that a smaller group working on it. And I know Lucas and I have had a couple of conversations in Slack and others have come in out of the dock. Um, it could happen here. I just also wanna be sensitive of your own agenda and what you typically do in this working group and realizing that this is yet a distinct other thing. I think it, it meets the common objective by impacting the entire project uh, from that perspective, but it's also not a small undertaking and the people that are showing up here showed up for the common working group and not necessarily to work on this project. So if it ends up being sort of like a, a special side team, that's I'm also fine with that. I think for me personally, I, I have a pretty tight schedule, so I can't add too many more meetings to my own schedule. Um, so I don't know if this is a good place for it. I also was just kind of curious to hear what kind of things were covered in this meeting and whether or not at face value, I thought it was appropriate to bring it into this space and then let the people that are already in the space opt in or out of it. And then if people want to be a part of it, then we can bring it in. If you don't feel like it's part of the mandate that you expected in the common working group, then I think we should take it out. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it depends a little bit on on your workflow as well. We could certainly try it here and see see if it works. I mean, the, so the way these meetings are normally run, in answer to that question, is uh, we usually we usually start by reviewing the PRs and open issues, and um, sometimes the metrics tracking spreadsheet, and then we pick one or two metrics to work on. So what we could do is if you want feedback on some of the data use awareness stuff, if you've made some progress on it since the last meeting, we could pick that as one of the things that we focus on in a particular meeting. Um, and I'm just using that as an example. Obviously some of the other stuff that, that Lucas pinned in the um, Slack channel, we could we could do that with it as well. And so we could, we could just sort of pick it as one of the things to focus on. Um, or if you had specific things that you wanted to talk about related to any of these documents, we could certainly just put it on the agenda and talk about it. Um, but, you know, like a lot of the, the working groups, you know, bits of it happen outside the meeting with development on the documents and then bits of it happen in the meeting where we work on the documents together. Do you generally feel like it's in line with the common working groups objectives? Um, yeah, because I mean, we kind of, we created the common working group, we sort of called it the island of misfit metrics, um, because it was, it was the metrics that kind of cut across multiple things that cut across multiple working groups. And so I do see things like the data use awareness statement cutting across the whole project. So, so this was sort of designed to handle the, the metrics and things like that, that, that cut across. So I think from that standpoint, things like this could easily, easily fit into the common working group. Okay, um, Lucas, do you have anything you want to add? If he does, he's on mute. <laughs> I will say it does seem like from your agenda that the first half is all process and ops um, versus metrics. So that, that's also, I feel like part of the consideration if we bring, keep bringing in non-metrics related work then eventually the common metrics working group becomes just the common ops working group. Yeah. Um, well, to be fair, like the operations piece of the, the meeting is usually relatively quick. Um, Hi, I have redialed in. Thank you for making a little space for me and I apologize for being a little 
disorganized this first time I'm joining. I think that um, I really appreciate the wisdom of Sophia's points. Um, and um, the important thing to me is making sure that, you know, number one, the privacy stuff doesn't overload the other agenda items for the uh, common working group. And then number two, that uh, the inverse or the reverse, that common doesn't um, make it harder to complete the work of the privacy uh, of the privacy goals. I have a couple of comments. I, I, I think it fits here. I think this list that Don has up with like metrics release updates, um, document distribution and data awareness statement, like we're seeing all the possible things at once. I don't think we would necessarily talk about all of these in one meeting every time. So um, I think if we could spend part of the meeting on one of these things, or, you know, part partly two, that's, I think that would fit. Um, and then the thing that I think common provides that the weekly working group doesn't provide the weekly call is we don't really do work in the weekly call. It's we have a lot of people there. And we have a lot of newcomers as well. And it's a lot about just kind of updates and kind of talking about the direction of the chaos project as a whole. And so I think these working groups, we do spend time where we, we stop the recording, and we just go work on a document for a little while. And that could prove really beneficial. I mean, if we had 11 people on this call right now, like if we just stopped right now and went and took a look at the data use awareness statement, it would probably make pretty good progress pretty fast, or at least get a lot of comments <laughs> really fast. Uh, so I like that too, because the working groups are a little bit more working oriented than that weekly call. Um, I guess the last question I would have around that is just, um, it seems like this group is pretty good about putting in the agenda ahead of the meeting. Uh, this is just a tricky time slot for me. I will always reliably have it free. So if I can be more proactive with looking at the agenda and seeing what's on the docket, then I might be more of a temporary, I would say temporary, inter intermittent itinerant, uh, <laughs> somewhere in there where not not permanently here, but I will make an effort to be here um, when relevant topics are in. I hope that's okay. I'll rely on this document as a way to check in on the agenda just because Thursdays, I don't know why, but it's like super popular meeting day. Uh, so um, sometimes I have conflicts. And to be fair, um, anybody can add anything to the agenda. So if you know that a Thursday is going to work for you, and you know that you want to talk about the data use statement we can you can just add it to the agenda ahead of time okay um too so we can be we can be super super flexible about that um so to um step away from that kind of um scheduling and organizational issues um uh, i just want to put some actual kind of working items on the table and um mention that um, we're collecting a list of relevant regulations and that was posted in Slack. And right now that covers um, GDPR and US and California and so on. And um, it would be great to also have uh, China, Latin America, you know, Nigeria, just kind of getting away from the usual suspects in the US and the EU. The intent with this on document is not to prescribe but to be a resource for looking up so it's basically a list of links to relevant regulations um lucas i know i'd seen it in slack um given that this data the late doc linked in this agenda seems to be our central place do you want to add that link into that doc so it's discoverable all in the same place i just uh, I, will, I will do that Thanks. And then just as I just with this document, and I think I've asked this like 20 times, but this would be within each metric, this document would live in one central location, and there would be a link provided to this document. Is that right? 
Agreed. Okay. Although I think that um, something we haven't talked about that is relevant is that there may be items that are like facets of privacy that are specifically relevant to the metric. Not that I know of any. Right. No, I hear you. Right. And this doesn't necessarily address that. This is much broader. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, because I'm wondering then, Matt, I feel like the immediate connection for me is anything in the DEI metric land where you are collecting more sensitive levels. So something that we were talking about um, in Slack, Lucas and I were talking about sort of whether or not we want to provide more prescriptive guidance on levels of PII. Um, NIST gives you a framework for doing it. And so we can either, like I was trying to borrow as much as what has already been established in governing bodies like NIST. Um, but something where most of the PII that's in these metrics is pretty low level because this is pub like pub information that you volunteer publicly. But once you start getting into survey collection, then you are collecting things that aren't necessarily public, um, as well as more sensitive in terms of people relating their individual characteristics and affiliations. Um, so for that, there might be like what I had kind of envisioned is we have our general statement and then for metrics like that, that could have sort of an extra flag saying that we've identified that data involved in these sorts of metrics tends to be at a higher level of risk because it includes more sensitive information about people or something like that. So we could try to kind of come up with a couple of canned statements that are just so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time um, just to kind of like in addition to the general statement have a flag that explicitly calls out this is an area where you might get into more trouble. That's like why that. um, yeah. the, uh, the, the GDPR distinguishes between all PII and sensitive PII. And I'm just smiling because I feel like this, even in the past week, we've seen some pretty interesting uh, rulings in Europe around <laughs> what Definitely. constitutes yes information um like especially like ip addresses and pulling in fonts from a u.s based server yeah. i don't know if you saw that one but like it's getting pretty wily it makes me want to chuck everything and go work on web privacy <laughs> um, but I, I appreciate the space here i know there's a bunch of other things on the agenda item so i think it sounds like We'll plan to bring these conversations here, do some work offline, and I would love to use this space as like a, a review gut check to share what we did and ask for some feedback. Yeah, that would be perfect. Um, okay, so let's let's move on to the issues and poll requests. I'm sorry, just one last note on that. Okay. This is then the Slack channel is WG Common to have these discussions. It was that was the renamed. I think you you added me into that one, right? Yeah, I think you're all good. I just want to for the record. Um, so one of the things we talked about last time was that we needed to archive the 2021 meeting notes. So Vinod very helpfully um, did that. So that all I'm just gonna scroll all the way down but that looks pretty good okay um are there any any concerns about this PR I think it's pretty straightforward straightforward I'm glad we're doing this in all the working groups yep agreed okay I'll just go ahead and merge it um And then issues. The only new one we have from the last time we talked is the organizational diversity um, metric review, which is what uh, Benod created. Um, let's just have a quick look at that one. We have a Google Doc now, thank you. And um, looks like you've copied the, the template in, so we've got a nice checklist as we 
go through the review of this metric and uh, revisit it and make any changes we need to make. Um, let me just go back to the agenda. So we had, so I think the review, the PRs and open issues, I think that looks good unless there's anything anybody else wants to talk about. I closed one issue that was related to the occasional contributors. Okay. Just because I think we're, it was the conversation about renaming it. And so I think that conversation has been captured in the document. Okay. So I, that was one thing I did. Okay. Because we already have the this issue. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, I didn't realize we had two for that one. So now the question is, we, we have three things that we could talk about and we have about what, 10 minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, we could talk about um, occasional and consistent contributors. We could talk about organizational diversity or Matt, did we talk all the way through this issues in the working group? No, can we not talk about that this week? I can, it's a yeah. kind of a big thing. Okay. Or, or we can talk about it. I mean, it's it, it's more operational. Like we're not hitting any metrics and I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to talk about a metric. Well, it's up, it's up to you. Do you feel like you made enough progress on occasional and consistent contributors that we could um, wrap it up in 10 minutes? Um, yeah, I think we can probably take a look at it. Okay, well, I tell you, why don't, is it all right if I stop sharing and you share so that yeah, we can? Sure. Yeah, that works. It'll just be easier. Give me a second. And you can drive that discussion. And then, Vinod, how do we talk about um, episodic contributors, or sorry, uh, organizational diversity next time? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Okay, so and I'm kind of glad Kevin's on here too because um, so this is um, a revised metric is it not a revised metric no it's an in progress metric and so um, Kevin were we gonna one question for you is is it in this round that we wanted to add like what else the other names this metric could be uh, yes, yeah, that uh, that okay. new template has been uh, has been published. So I believe uh, synonyms goes right below question. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, Syn synonyms colon, uh, and then the synonyms are uh, comma delineated. Okay, uh, and then a general guidance for synonyms is don't dig too deep. Uh, yeah. The goal is not to. To, to name every possible synonym that we can think of for this. Uh, the goal is to uh, name the ones that are kind of known and used uh, that can help people immediately understand what this metric is. Okay. Uh, so, and I know there, uh, there was a ton of conversation, like a lot of conversation about what the name of this metric is. Uh, so, so we should have some pretty good ideas about uh, other synonyms. <laughs> that was in that issue that I closed. That's where yeah, like, yeah, that's I where was, all these names were. I was part of that conversation. That was a fun conversation. Yep. Well, and here they are, right here, actually. Yep. It's all just yeah. Moved up. Yeah, we can just copy that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so really, I mean, at this point, it's about kind of giving it one last look from this group, because then the next step would be to obviously add the synonyms. Uh, we also kind of remember we had the dev stats visual in here and it was impossible to read. So um, that's gone. I thought it was just easier to just get rid of it because these metrics are just, as you know, to kind of help locate people <laughs> into what the metric is about and we don't, that just ended up creating confusion. So um, I'll add links. I do need to add just links to dev stats because they do provide this information and in Augur and Cauldron like in the past. And really the only thing that we're missing at this point is the contributors. 
to this metric. And so if you feel like you've made a contribution and would like to add your name to the metric, I ask that you do that or just send me a note so that we can capture that. And I can kind of let this maybe sit for a week or so, or, or I, you know, if you want to add your name or you want to make any final comments on the metric. Um, but then I think the, the goal is to get it into a PR and kind of begin that whole release process. Thank you. I'm guessing anonymous Wolverine is Kevin. That is me. Quick question. So uh, the name that most people use for this one is probably not a name that uh, sure. is good for inclusive naming conventions. Uh, that's the the drive drive by contributors. Mm -hmm. Do we still want to include that? We could include it and say, but this is a bad term. Uh, maybe drive by. Put it at the end too. Uh, I would maybe leave it off. To be just honest, leave it off. With, uh, yeah. Like no. I think mean, that's that's part of the point. With, well, it's part of the point with the inclusive naming is that you know you, even if we say it's not inclusive by by including it, people react to it, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and possibly very viscerally. So I would I would just leave it off. Okay. okay. Right on. All right. So I honestly there's that's really kind of the update done. Like I think we're kind of good on this. I think it's ready to move into the PR phase. And okay. If you feel like adding yourself as a contributor, please do so. Down here at the bottom. Cool. And I just like I said, I have just a few. Few little to do's here. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Well, it's uh, since we are almost out of time, is there anything else we want to try to cover in our last? I forget, do we end at a quarter till or 10 till? 10 till, but. Okay. So, in our last five minutes, does anybody have anything they want to talk about or anything that they want to discuss? I just have a question about this one. Sorry, this is the first time I'm looking at it, so I apologize if these are things you've already discussed about just sure. before. Um, for something like this kind of metric, there's always the sort of the what does it mean in the long run of the project? Where it's like, are people coming in and out, or are they converting to more like to provide more contribution and increase their contribution levels to the project and kind of looking at indicators of what leads someone to stay engaged, say minimally engaged or increase engagement. Um, where this is an area, maybe this is more metrics model, but like in my head, there's a very strong connection between a metric like this and also looking at your general engagement levels in the project and sort of other participation metrics that this could follow on or as an extension of. Um, and I was just wondering, with a metric like this, how how you would ref, like refer back to either a model or related metrics, where kind of like the handoff between metrics between something that's labeled as an occasional contributor to looking at more, say, like the core contributor group within a project. I, listening to you talk, it seems like that's a. I wish Sean were here too because I think he's done work on this, like taking a look at what might be constituted as an occasional contributor and what the like conversion of that occasional contributor is to be a more consistent contributor uh, in a project. Um, so that does, the way you were talking about it, Sophia, it does sound like a metrics model, like how we think about community <laughs> a contributor attraction and retention or something along those lines to which occasional contributing would be a consideration in that model. Okay. Um, the other part of it that we've been thinking about a lot, I guess, within our own projects is just how do we increase the like, contribution quality for occasional contributors? So if people are only gonna come in and out, is there a way that we can ensure that they're actually providing net value versus causing more work? Cause that's sort of the like, 
the bane is people that come in and out and they're just sort of leaving useless comments or causing a lot of noise and there was a lot of grumblings for things like Hacktober incentivizing the wrong kinds of behavior and just sort of those kinds of things that would be picked up by this occasional contributor metric. But I think there's sort of the second level of analysis is where it gets really interesting is how do we, if we look at more programmatic ways to improve the effectiveness of occasional contributors. But now I'm thinking more philosophically about applying this metric. So I guess that means it's a good metric. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think there are, uh... There are a number of models that this one is going to be relevant to. A couple of them that we actually already have in. I think this one would be connected to the 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 welcoming model that we're working on. Yeah. Uh, path yeah. to leadership is another one that uh, this one could be uh, used for. Although I, path to leadership is not one that is uh, currently being advanced. Uh, So it sounds like I need to sit on more metrics model conversations. I'm actually putting this in the metrics model notes right now. <laughs> We're not supposed, this isn't how things are supposed to work. They're not supposed to come from the working groups to the metrics model, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, in the, in the evolution group, we've actually been giving some thought to, uh, to metrics models as well. So we're doing a little bit of that, at least thinking about it in, in evolution, I don't know if, work will be done there, but. Well, thanks for humoring me. Yeah. I think this conversation has always been going back and forth, whether the work should be done in the uh, working groups or to the metric model. So sometimes work happens in the group and moves to the metric model. Sometimes they do something and pass it to the working group. So, so far, this is what I have observed. Got it. Well, it's recorded over there. So cool. All right. Well, now we really are about out of time. So thank you, everybody. These were really interesting discussions. And I hope to see you again in two weeks. Bye, everybody. Bye, thank everybody. you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.